today I'm going to be talking about beauty standards in Korea. But just one sec. Let's go. So this video has been requested of me. And this question has been asked of me a lot. Like, how is it living in Korea, basically being so visually different? And people do wonder how I live here as someone who stands out so much in several different ways, which I'll get into later on in the video. And uh, they wonder, is that gonna affect the way that they're treated when they come to Korea? And I've had those conversations a lot with friends, family, um, people who follow me on Instagram who are just interested in Korean culture and things like that. And um, surprisingly enough, before I came to Korea, it wasn't something that I actually really considered. And it wasn't something that really hit me until I had actually lived here for about six months. And then I was like, ah, practicalities. So today I'm gonna talk a lot about beauty standards, what they are in Korea, how they affect me, and how they may affect you if you come here. So your girl actually made notes because for me, this is such a sticky topic. You know, we're talking about an entire country and we're talking essentially about a generalization. I think it's really important to note before we even discuss what beauty is in Korea that Korea is a homogenous country. This is something I mentioned in my video when I talked about being black in Korea. You know, in the high 90s, okay, percent of people in Korea are ethnically Korean. I believe it's probably 97 and that means 3% of people here are not Korean. We're immigrants and of those people, <laughs> majority of those people are Southeast Asians like Filipinos, Japanese, etc. So therefore, if you are American, African, English, mm, from Ireland, Canada, I'm trying to think of people who can teach English through my company. There's seven countries, so I can't remember. Basically, if you're anyone who doesn't look Asian, you're gonna stand out. I say all this to say that when you live in a homogenous country, you can't really compare the beauty standards to countries like America and England, where there's a lot more people from other ethnic backgrounds. That means the beauty standards are gonna be a lot more varied than Korea where most people are Korean because there's just not anyone else to kind of include and I don't know if that's going to change in the future with the fact that a lot more people are coming to Korea but right now that is the way that it is. Okay so now into the actual standards. What in Korea is considered beautiful? So the first thing, and the thing that probably stands out the most, is that white skin is considered very, very beautiful. Very, very pale, and you'll often see that people um, will do things like glutathione injections to brighten their skin, whiten their skin. You'll see whitening products and brightening products everywhere. And although brightening and whitening are not the same, you'll see a lot of whitening products. So I actually have to be so careful selecting my beauty products because I'm like, is this gonna whiten or brighten? There's a difference. And I am seeing a beauty shift. I'm seeing um, celebrities and YouTubers with tan skin come out and break those, you know, um, stereotypes. I'm also seeing which is crazy, I'm seeing a rise of self-tanning places. There's a few self-tanning places in Seoul. So it's definitely changing and I guess it's because the world is becoming so much more global and beauty standards are gonna change everywhere. But yeah, white skin is the, is the symbol of beauty. So the second thing, and you've probably heard of this, is the double eyelids, which I don't get it. The double eyelid is very, very, common procedure in Korea, a very common procedure. 
and I'm not when I say I don't get it I just pretty much don't get the procedure and often my friends would be like he has a double eyelid and I'm like what's a double eyelid like I, I don't know what you mean I'm assuming it's like the extra fold here when my eyes are open you can see I don't know but it's considered beautiful and it's considered something that makes your eyes look bigger and more attractive in Korea and in a lot of countries in Southeast Asia. I actually was watching a um, Chinese drama, or is it Taiwanese drama the other day and they mentioned, oh, he has double eyelids, so handsome. And I was like, I still don't get it. Like, I don't see, okay, whatever. It doesn't hurt me, it's not affecting me. Apparently I have double eyelids, so whatevs but yeah it's considered a beauty a, be a symbol of beauty and often people will go out and get surgery so they can have a double eyelid and it's very very popular which i find really interesting and i do want to actually see one because then maybe i will be able to see what's so special about it but that's also considered a standard of beauty on top of that small faces and v-shaped faces so faces that are like this and you'll see this is a common pose as well in selfies mm, to give yourself a more v-lined face um it's considered very cute and you know soft and gentle innocent and pure i think it's adorable you know large eyes very small face you know very v-shaped face it's cute and actually you'll see there are products that you can like roll on your face and they'll give you a v-shape supposedly there's surgeries to give yourself more of a v-shape when you see like a lot of Asian apps that edit your face, they'll give you more of a V-shape. It's just the standard, but I do see Koreans who don't have a strong V-line who are considered, you know, very attractive. So like I said, maybe that's a new change. I don't know. Or maybe just people just know like beauty does come in all face shapes. So the last one is body, body standards. And the next one does kind of affect women a little bit more so than men. Um, but I think it also affects men. There's a very high emphasis on health here and fitness, but also being just thin, just being thin. And for women, the kind of expected standard goal weight is 47 to 50 kilos, which is about 100 to 110 pounds and i think that for most of us in western countries that would be considered extremely petite but in korea that's kind of what a lot of women are striving to be they don't want to have any extra fat at all and so diet culture is really really prevalent and i'm actually not going to go too much into diet culture because i am making a video about it currently so that will come out soon ish <laughs> and i'll talk in more detail about what that diet culture looks like but there is an emphasis on being thin a lot of tv stars and um and singers will you know talk about being on diets you might even see references to it in k dramas one of my favorite k dramas um my love from a star she makes a comment about only eating an apple a day and um you know that is that is quite common you you can find all sorts of all sorts of products you know to to, to help you diet and um i hope you stay tuned for that video that's coming out because it's gonna be an expose no i'm joking it's really not but yeah there's a there's a huge huge pressure to be thin here so that's pretty much the beauty standards let's review white skin big eyes double eyelids v-shaped face small face and thin equals beautiful in Korea, mostly, generally. So like I mentioned before, Korean standards are slowly changing. For real, for real, slowly changing. I don't think they're gonna change that much and personally, in my opinion, I don't really think they need to if Koreans are happy with the way that their standards are. It isn't for Westerners to come here and start movements no shade but they are changing you're seeing a rise up of a body positivity movement we're seeing people saying hey tan skin can be beautiful koreans do have tan skin sometimes yeah and they're still beautiful and i think that's really empowering for them i love watching by the sidelines and just you go sis um <laughs> but 
the question I get is how does that affect me as a foreigner now if you don't know which how can you not know that means you haven't watched my other videos I am a plus size girl and plus size in Korea and plus size in the UK it's not the same I think I am the maximum plus size in Korea whereas my plus size in the UK I am literally the I'm on the cusp I'm a size 16 to 18 and in Korea that's pretty much as big as they go so I'm the start of plus size in the UK and I'm at the end of plus size in Korea so that should give you a sense of what we're working with here on top of that I'm very short which actually is kind of okay because the average height in Korea is um, a lot less or a little bit less than the average height in the UK I'm still considered short in Korea I'm just short everywhere I go. I'm 152 centimeters so without heels so there's that <laughs> there's that and obviously I am very dark skinned because I'm black so people do ask me like do I have any difficulties trying to fit into Korean beauty standards and do I get treated differently because I don't fit into Korean beauty standards and I think it's a very valid question excuse me my nose is itching <laughs> Damn you hay fever, Lord of mercy. <clears throat> it's really itchy. Yeah, it's one thing I really like about living in Korea. Of course, living here, they expect that you will assimilate in the sense that you will respect the boundaries of their culture. You will come here and you will respect the country and you will respect the language and the food and you know try your best to integrate yourself as much as possible however they don't expect anyone who isn't Korean to be Korean the expectation is never for me to you know whiten my skin and you know even with my hair and stuff I wear wigs and that's generally a personal choice because of the staring and the touching but it's not like no one's ever said you should straighten your hair because you're in Korea now that's never happened and um, even for the weight you know on a day-to-day -day basis Koreans don't comment on my weight or anything I actually have never had any comments and I know some of my friends have who are smaller than me people be like you're so pretty but you should lose weight to my friends but not to me and I'm bigger than them but I think also it's because I'm black and they do think that black women are tend to be a bit more curvy you know it's not always a negative thing I get called cute pretty beautiful literally almost every day which my head is huge y'all keep asking me why i don't want to come back to the uk because it's huge like <laughs> people are not judging me by the standards of korean is what i'm trying to say people are judging me based on whether they just think i'm attractive to look at or if they think i'm cute i don't get pressure to you know be 47 kilos and straighten my hair and whiten my skin i don't get that pressure at all because i'm a foreigner and i think when koreans see me they don't judge me through their lens of what is a beautiful Korean. They just judge me on based as a human. Do, do I think she's cute or not? But that's it. Now, does that mean that it's all peachy keen living here? No. So I am going to talk about one thing, the other side of things that does affect me to do with beauty standards. And that is represent fucking representation representation Woo. especially because I live in a small town I do not live in Seoul stop asking me <laughs> I don't live in Seoul I say it almost every video but anyway I don't live in Seoul so there are not many other foreigners here I have a small group of friends who live here with me who are also teachers but you know none of them are actually black either so not that that makes a huge deal. yeah it does they can find makeup so <laughs> but um it's rare to see myself represented and to be honest that was a fight in the uk you know black people in the uk are still fighting for representation where there's a hell of a lot more of us there than here so i wasn't expecting to but i wasn't expecting it to have an effect on me and one year in it actually did whenever you like go outside or you go to a beauty store um you know just you just you don't know you don't really know it has a subconscious effect on you like everyone is this one shade everyone has this kind of hair and everyone is this one size and of course that's gonna have an effect on you and then 
the other thing that really did affect me was my Instagram. I was following a lot of people who didn't look like me, um, Westerners and Koreans alike. And that did, you know, the flood of images of people who were considered beautiful, getting thousands and thousands of likes. And then the flood of images every time I went shopping online or shopping in stores of models who look nothing, nothing like me. You know, and never really seeing another face, face to face, who looked like me very often. Um, so I can go months and months without seeing another black girl. And I never thought that was going to bother me or affect me, but it did. Because, believe it or not, it is actually important to see yourself reflected back at you in good ways. Seeing people who look like you and being able to talk about your interests together does affect you. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't prepared for that. And I'm in a country where plastic surgery is kind of renowned. So it got to the point where I was like, I just want to change the way I look. And um, <clears throat> I was like, what I had intended to do was get um, fillers. <laughs> fillers and um, in my cheeks and in my nose. And, uh, you know, like Botox and Botox and Botox. And, you know, I was like, maybe I'll get a little lipo. I'll get fat dissolving injections in my chin. Um... I'll get a little bit of a brightening injection, you know, you know. And I was like, brightening and lighting are not the same. But it's like, yeah, but it's an injection, man. Like, that's super extreme. Um, and luckily, I had friends who were like, are you okay? I remember at that time, my friends and family were just, just, just they were like, which is we're just gonna pray that she comes out of it. I go through a lot of fashion stages, to be fair. I've been emo and goth and I've been kawaii. I I've done all sorts, so I think at the time they were like, we hope she comes out of this. But I I'm pretty sure that they were like, we'll give it a while and then if she doesn't, there's gonna be intervention. She's gonna have to come home because it was quite worrying. I lost myself for a while there. I've never gone through something like that before and I know a lot of my friends who have and I, I've always been like how oh, you're so beautiful so it was really a shock to me I did pull myself out of it it took a very 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 long time but at the end of that tunnel was uh, even like a new improved me like I am super confident now and I actually have more confidence than I had before <laughs> so anyway <clears throat> I shared that with you so that you would know that even the most pro, black, pro, self-love people in the world, you know, when you come to a homogenous country, it can have an effect on you. And um, I just think it's really important to have people who support you, affirm you, for you to affirm yourself and to surround yourself with things that affirm who you are as a person not just the way you look but who you are inside and that's going to help reinforce your confidence when you do go months and months without seeing anyone who looks like you when you do go on instagram and you see people who look completely different who have these amazing lives you know and you're just like <laughs> you know so i think that's really really important and shout out to my friends who send me amazing messages that i get to wake up to every morning being like hey girl how you doing beautiful and you're amazing and blah blah like i really appreciate that i think it's really important that's something i didn't expect and i would have prepared for had i known but i know now and i'm alive and my eyes are no longer green so there is that so anyway to finish off this video I want to share some tips with you on how to navigate the beauty standards in Korea. You know, all through the lens of self-love because that's how we brand ourselves over here. Okay, so the first thing I will say is that being in Korea and being a foreigner is amazing because nobody's judging you by any sort of standard. So you can find your own style i have really come into my own style since coming to korea like i've always been into really cute things and overdressing and all that stuff but you know in london where it's kind of gray <laughs> people do kind of like where's she going <laughs> on this rainy monday morning in a bright pink square backpack but in Korea, there's a lot more fashion freedom, particularly as a foreigner, because like I said, nobody's judging you from the lens of what a Korean is supposed to be. So use this opportunity to find your style 
Like, experiment, man. If you want to try pink hair, blonde hair, shoulder length hair, go shorter and shorter and shorter, which I've never done before. And this is the place to do it. And I guarantee you, if you rock your shit with confidence, you're going to get the compliments. Okay, number two. Number two. And I'm, I'm, always, I'm almost wishing I'd put this as number one. Be purposeful about what you flood yourself with. Be purposeful about your social media. Be purpose, purposeful about the programs you watch. Be purposeful about basically anything that you're consuming in terms of media engagement. I'm not saying that because you look this way, you should only follow Instagrammers who look that way. I'm saying diversify. Look at all types of beauty you know see beauty in everything but also yes try to look at people who represent you and the way you look because for example i am a plus size girl and so when i look for fashion inspiration i try to look at other plus size girls does that mean i solely look at plus size girls no you know how am i gonna flood myself with images of people who are like half my size and then be like I feel great we're humans and our subconscious is so powerful so just be very very wary of that I have started reading books with more strong black characters I have been more purposeful about following uh, more black content creators on my socials and on YouTube I have been um, just more purposeful with social media in general and you know taking time after flooding myself with all this media to do media cleanses as well and just to see the beauty in myself that's important and i guess the last thing i'm gonna say is use this opportunity to better yourself simple as that maybe don't focus so much on the way you look maybe focus more on who you are inside my self-care here has been off the charts i've done so much healing and so much self-reflection i never thought i'd be this person and here i am you probably don't know who this person is so i don't know why i said it like that but i know who this person is and i've done a lot of work and i'm really happy with it so that's what matters and i guess get resourceful in your journey man um you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to seek things out because you are a minority here a minority of a minority i thought i knew what a minority was and then i came to korea and i was like ah <laughs> so yeah i think i'm gonna end the video here i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was insightful i'm gonna be back with a really fun one next week yo i'm so excited um i need to calm down it's not that deep it is. I'm really excited. But if you like this video, thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Peace.